What are my top three baits I think you should be using in the month in December? That's what we're going to talk about right now. Not one, not two, but three. Whoa, calm down, Citywide. I'd just like to say thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you can do me a favor, if you're not a subscriber, click that subscribe button. Click that like button. Become part of the team and family, and I really do appreciate it. We have to start off. I have broken it down into the upper, middle, and southern states for the last few months. That's not going to happen this month, only because the northern states are getting a lot of it. It's really winter. It's cold. It's icy. But if you can find open water, you'll find fish. The middle of the country and the southern states are going to fish pretty much the same. Even though it's going to be a lower draw in areas like Pickwick where they're removing water and stuff, the fish are always acting the same. They're getting into that 40 to 50 degree weather and they're doing the same thing. Those middle bass are even are acting just like these nor these Florida strain bass. And this is a really great time to catch studs. Honestly, January and February, the fish are trying to do their thing down here and in, in some of the lower states. They're going to get ready to spawn fairly soon the next couple few months but the big fish are out there being very lethargic and they're looking for slow moving baits they're not going to go after and charge something unless it's really big and it's really slow so the southern and the middle of the country are going to use the same lures this month and again in the middle of the country the water levels are low the draw they're drawing water even down here water levels are extremely low just because we don't have the rain but again they're going to fish this is going to fish the same in both areas what i'm going to key in for me down here in the south and what i think you should key in in the middle of the country is slow moving reaction baits now i'm not saying that you can't catch them on a jig which is going to be would be great right now or a crankbait would be phenomenal but that's what everyone's going to tell you to use that's easy. Put the jig on, bounce it off the bottom, give it aggressive hops, and just move it slow. That's what you can do. You'll catch lots and lots of fish. Because right now, their main forage for bass is a shad. That's what they're looking to eat. And shad are constantly moving on the move to get away from the bass. So that's what they're going to eat. That's what they're keyed in on. So remember that when you're fishing these baits. Now, I would have put this one in my top three. Not one, not two, but three. You tell them citywide, but I don't own one of these. And it's only because of the water I fish doesn't really, it doesn't really work. But if you have an Alabama rig, put on some sort of, sort of Largo shad or some sort of small swim bait that has a big kicker tail, throw that thing out there. You're going to catch, you're going to wallop them with them. That's going to be, that should be number one, but it isn't this month. And let me say what happens, what happened in November is really going to happen in December too. During the winter months is when fish are lethargic and they're not wanting to move a great distance to eat and their reaction is the same during those colder months. The water's a lot cooler. They are going to move in to shallow waters during the middle of the day and in the early afternoon, but then push themselves off when the water gets cooler. So target areas that have a point or a point that comes out in that pond or lake, they're going to sit on there and wait for fish to go by it and ambush it. That's a great place. And if there's by chance you happen to find some grass, fish it. Put it on, remember where that space is or where that, that grass is and just be consistent because they're gonna. that's going to be a great place for the shad to hide and then also the bass to ambush a uh, fish. So my first space is going to be a giant swim bait. Now these are both six inch swim baits. This is the Mega Bass. This is the Megalodon. The reason why I have these out is you can make a big cast with them cast and just let the bait do the work. Just make it slowly reel it in. That tail's gonna go back and forth. It's gonna have a little bit of a body roll and that will entice bass too. If they're gonna go after something, it's a big enough, uh, a big enough bait for them to, to eat. It's a big meal for them. So first one is going to be a fairly big swim bait. And these are just the ones I have readily at hand. Next, or my second bait, is just a small swim bait. Now, this is a new one from Savage Gear called the Fat Minnow T-Tail. I'm just doing a closer look on it. And it has great action, great size. That's about the size of the shad. Now, again, if you notice, there's one thing that you're going to notice that's common about these, the last bait and this bait, is the size of the tail. If you notice that tail is very wobbly and is going to kick back and forth and just make this 
real weird motion. It's going to give off vibration, but it's also going to look realistic to the, the bass. And as it comes near, it has a little body roll. So in this case, I just have a swim bait jig that's like a hookup jig, I think, and then this Savage Gear bait. And I'm just going to, again, make that long cast and just reel it in fairly slow. Keep it just moving and bobbing kind of a little bit. And my third bait is the same as last year. If you don't have a suspending twitch bait, you're really, really not fishing right. This is, this is a little bit deeper diver. These are what you should have on. Now with these, again, you're making that cast and you're twitching it and pausing it. That pause is gonna enable the bass to feel it and then find it and eat it. I have that one and then I have my favorite one. This is the Engage Loader Minnow and this is probably one of my biggest confidence baits. I like to throw it a long way and twitch it and I just twitch it erratically and that bait will do one of these bits in the water. And then when I pause it, it slowly suspends up and as it suspends up, it gets crushed. This is the bait that I caught that giant speck on last year, two years ago. And that bait is just so good. Now there is that Mega Bass one is just as good, but that bait is probably seven or eight bucks uh, from Engage and a band of anglers. And that one just is, it's really amazing. And, and when, if you never knew, it has a metal lip, so it can bounce off things much better without breaking. And because it has, it's so thin there, it gives it exceptional uh, uh, action. If you don't know, the thicker the bill, the least amount of action that happens. So that bait is so thin because it's metal that it not only can deflect and handle the abuse that you put it through to, to hit all the cover and everything, it just gives it exceptional action. So those are my three baits I think you should use in November. Thanks for hitting that like and subscribe button. Make sure you comment below and tell me what three you're gonna use. Remember, take a kid fishing, get your fish on. This is a little bit shorter, thank goodness. Take less time to edit. I'll talk to you soon, cheers.